Gimel. Ka'awa wa'anawa, arrogance and humility. 1. The enormous humility of the true Zadok that brings him to the level of nothing gives him the power to atone for sins. 4-7. to 7. 2. A person who is humble becomes stripped of material aspects and merged with the infinite. He then attains the awareness of how everything that happens to him is only for his benefit. This aspect is a taste the life of the world to come. Ibid. 9. 3. Pride brings poverty. Ibid. 8. 4. Through humility a person attains Teshava. Repentance. For the essence of repentance by feeling his own lowliness, insignificance, and the many wrongs he has done. And to understand that it's definitely proper if he has to endure contempt and murderous opposition in his quest for the truth. And this is the essence of Teshava. 6-2. 5. Even someone who has fasted and undergone privations. Let him not think he's already a Zadok. With the power to perform Pidyanat redemptions, or to accomplish great feats through prayer. He just needs to contemplate himself and see that after all his fasting and asceticism, his physical desires are still attached to his body, as well as the impurity of his father's lust from the time he was conceived. This too is still attached to his body. As soon as he recognizes this he will be overcome with trepidation and he will no longer delude himself with the thought that he is a Zadok. Instead he will turn to the true Zadokim and bring his prayers to them and ask them to intercede on his behalf. For they alone understand the secret of prayer and the way to elevate prayer. And the Holy Blessed One yearns for their prayers and sends an eloquent flow of words to their lips. 10-4. to 4. 6. Those arrogant people who hinder themselves as well as others from going to the Zadokim to ask them to pray on their behalf. They deprive Hashem Yitbarak of his desire. For the prayers of the Zadokim. Ibid. 7. Pride is idolatry. A main way to crush it is by following the Zadokim. Ibid. 5. 8. To break one's pride is the foundation for attaining wisdom. Life and length of days. The harsh decrees are sweetened. And one attains faith. Great joy and attains both the revealed and hidden Torah, and the aspect of Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of holiness. Ibid. 8. 9. 9. Arrogance is a type of idolatry. Arrogance makes a person unable to open his mouth. He lacks the faculty of speech and is unable to speak words that shine. And when words of Torah enter his mouth, not only do the words themselves fail to shine in him and draw him to improve, Worse still, the Torah itself becomes coarsened and dimmed from his mouth. 11 to 2. 10. Arrogance and sexual immorality are connected. A person who succeeds in resisting temptation and extricating himself from pride will attain the light that will illumine his path to repentance. In the end he will reach an understanding of the depths of Torah. Ibid. 2. 3. 11. There is a kind of humility that is the ultimate arrogance. Namely when a person acts humbly because he knows that people look down upon those who flaunt themselves. So he behaves humbly in order to gain their respect and honor. Hence his humility is for flaunting and honor. So it takes a good deal of intelligence and self-examination to rid yourself of pride. Cleansing yourself of it completely. As our sages OBM said, Avit 4 to 4, be very, very, lowly in spirit, for pride is the aspect of the seven idolatrous temples that caused Israel to be exiled from their land. Gideon 88, and whereby we still have not returned to our land, since people still pursue honor by prestige. Ibid. 7, 12, a person can only acquire Torah by Shifla, meekness by breaking his pride by the four aspects of shifla he must diminish himself before those who are greater than him before those who are on his own level and before those who are less than him and sometimes if he's the smallest of the small he must diminish himself even against his own level and view himself as lower than his own level 14 to 5 13 
A person has to guard himself from all the things that usually make people arrogant. And they are three things. Intelligence, power and wealth. Namely, he must break the arrogance that comes to him from all these things. And be humble and meek in all of them. Ibid. 14. The more a person breaks his pride the more he attains Torah. Thereby he will have the power to draw those who are far toward Hashem Yitbarak. Whereby the kavod, glory and presence, of Hashem Yitbarak will be magnified and exalted and he raises the kavod to its root and he attains Yirah, reverence. Thereby he will attain Shalom by it, Shalom in himself, and thereby he attains prayer, and thereby he attains universal Shalom, Shalom in all the worlds. Ibid. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 15. Arrogance can cause a person to be imprisoned. Ibid. 22, 11, 16. When the generation fails to guard their tongues, it can cause the kasherim, the religiously fit people, of the generation to succumb to feelings of pride. Therefore these kasherim of the generation need to carefully contemplate the prestige, honor and respect that comes to them, each according to his value, small or great, and contemplate and inspect himself lest he stumble in pride which is the exile of the Shechina. God forbid. 58 to 10. 17. The more a person diminishes himself, the more drawing power. Coach Ha Meshech. He has. Namely he can draw the Shechina of his godliness to the lowest worlds to dwell with us which is precisely his blessedness's desire since the day he created his universe. Also he can draw people to serving his blessedness, and also channel blessing and goodness to Israel, and he himself is able to be drawn to and follow the true Zadokim. 70. 18. By the sanctity of Shabbat a person can attain true humility, meaning to see one's own lowliness and recognize the importance of Israel and be willing to sacrifice oneself for them, as did Moshe Rabinu A. H. 79. 19. The essence of humility is for a person to regard himself as being lower than his actual level, lesser than he is, but at the very least he should not go out of his place and regard himself as being higher than the level he is at. Ibid. 20. When a person is meek and lowly, no one can remove him or push him from his place meaning to take away his livelihood. God forbid. Ibid. 21. Humility protects against sexual immorality. Pride arouses the Yetzer Hara for this temptation. And see above number 10. 130. 22. A segula for being saved from pride is to honor the festivals, receiving them with joy and open-heartedness to the extent of his means. 135. 23. Following the true Zadok nullifies pride. So this is a sign whether he's truly connected to the Zadok. If he's meek. Ibid. 24. When a person is so humble that he is literally nothing, he can attain Torah and greatness at the same time. Otherwise it is hard to have both of them together. Torah and greatness. 162. 25. When a person is arrogant, it is a sign that he will end up in trouble. The opposite is also true. A person who is humble and lowly will come to great honor. 168. 26. Regarding the sort of pride that results from converts etc. See Kavod number 28. 2. 5 to 5. 27. Whatever glory and greatness any kingdom or leader or ruler may possess. Their true basis lies in humility. The greater the humility of the ruler or leader, the more his power and dominion will spread. 16. 28. Regarding Haknaah, submission, humility, people have very mistaken ideas. You must guard yourself well from false modesty. Anawa Pesula. Pray to Hashem Yitbarak a great deal about this and ask to be worthy of true humility according to his blessed will. 22. 29. The essence of the resurrection which is destined for the future. 
when people will be revived and resurrected, will be only for the lowliness of each individual, namely, only the lowly, humble part of each person will be revived in the future resurrection. 4. The indescribable bliss which is the eternal life of the coming world cannot be received except by the true lowliness and meekness within an individual. It alone will be privileged to be revived and to experience the bliss and eternal life of the coming world. 72. 30. Rooted within every single Yisrael is the lowliness and humility of Moshe Rabinu A. H. In each and every limb. But this humility and lowliness is hidden within each person in the aspect of death, therefore a person does not feel this lowliness within himself. And therefore he is far from this humility and lowliness. But by drawing closer to the true Zadok, when he sees him, and all the more so when he hears Torah from his mouth, thereby he attains Busha and Teshava, and thereby he merits that this lowliness and humility comes to life. And then he attains true humility which is the aspect of everlasting life of the coming world. Ibid. 31. We must pray and plead a great deal with Hashem Yitbarak to make us worthy of true lowliness and humility. We really have no conception what is true humility and lowliness. Because being despised and worthless is certainly not the purpose. What people call a Shlemazelnik. For humility is the essence of the life that is in every single limb. And it's the bliss of the coming world. And it's certainly not the aim of the coming world to be despised and worthless etc. God forbid. So we need to just ask of Hashem Yitbarak to help us attain true humility and lowliness. Which is the essence of the life and the essence of the bliss of the coming world. As mentioned. Ibid. 32. When a person sees that things are not going well for him, he should know that there's some arrogance in him. He should do Teshava, lower himself, and bring himself to the level of Ma. What? Then things will begin to go well for him. 82. Dalet. Da. Divine Awareness and Consciousness. 1. Dot. Awareness and Consciousness of the Divine, lies mainly in the heart. Because the nations also have dot but it doesn't lie in the heart. And the essence of the dot is when it's in the heart. There in the heart is the place of Yira. Reverence. Meaning the essence of the dot is to know Hashem Yitbarak in one's heart and not just mentally. This means drawing and connecting the dot into the the heart until it's filled with the dread. Fear and reverence of his blessed greatness. Until he's stirred up to truly serve him until he attains the fear of the Ramamit, his exaltedness, to know who it is he should be fearing. And this he attains by doing Hitbadejit, secluded time and talk with God, until he judges himself, from within himself. Thereby he attains the Orha Ganas, the light that is treasured up for the just. 15, 1 to 3, 154, 2, all the afflictions, suffering, exile, and whatever a person is lacking, income, children, health and so forth, it's only according to his lack of dot. When his dot is perfected then all that was lacking is complete. And the essence of the eternal life of the future is on account of the dot. When the dot will abound, and everyone will know Hashem Yitbarak, and thereby be merged in his unity, and then they will live eternal life as does he. For by knowing the Blessed One a person is merged in the Blessed One. Which this is the essence of the delight of the coming world. So we need to diligently guard the dot and thoughts. To keep it in holiness. Guarding against bad thoughts and constantly pondering thoughts of Torah and devotion. To make the effort to arrive at the dot of holiness. On which everything depends as mentioned. 2111. 3. Attaining perfection of the dot is impossible unless you sanctify your mouth, nose, eyes and ears. This means, guarding your mouth from uttering falsehood, having fear of heaven, which is the holiness of the nose, having a moon at chakamim, faith in the sages, which is sanctity of the ears, believing in them and listening to their words, and averting your eyes from seeing evil, 
thereby you will be privileged unto complete dot, on which everything depends, as mentioned, and thereby you'll merit Hitlahavut Halav, burning of the heart, on the side of holiness. For the passion of the heart is generated due to movement of the intellect. Therefore when a person contemplates Torah and devotion, thereby his heart burns for Hashem Yitbarak, and the more he grows his dot and moves his mind within holiness, the more his heart heats up and burns, and the burning of the heart on the side of holiness purifies his heart. For opposite to how it burns for sins or evil cravings, God forbid, which pollutes his heart, against this he needs his heart to burn for Hashem Yitbarak in Torah and prayer, and thereby his heart will be purified, and he'll attain a pure heart, and thereby he'll always have new things to say when talking with his Creator, which is the category of Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of prophecy, 21-2, 156, 4. Also when a person is humble, meek and patient, and doesn't let his anger flare when he's mistreated, thereby he sanctifies his nose completely, and by being, Prov. 11.13, faithful spirit covering a thing, so when he's told a secret he's careful to not disclose it to others, thereby he sanctifies his ears, by doing all this he draws the bounty of the dot as mentioned, 21-6. 5. By this sanctity of the mouth, eyes, ears etc., which are the seven lamps, a person can receive a miraculous intellect. Sekel Nifla, in the aspect of Shefa Eliki, divine influx and gift, which is the essence of perfecting the dot, perceiving and understanding him without any introductions. But just by this Shefa Eliki, which is the aspect of Ruach HaKodesh, Ibid, 1 to 3. 6. Regarding those questions that trouble people, such as how can God be omniscient if we have Betshira, free will, know that the human mind is unable to understand this omniscience. For this Sekel, intellect, is the realm of Makif, the surrounding lights, it's so transcendent that the mind cannot bear it and it can't enter the mind except just encircle it from outside. If a person knew this Sekel, he'd be in the ranks of angels and not human. But know this. The essence of Betshira's power, is not knowing the Sekel of the Omniscience and the Betshira. But in the future to come, when the human intellect expands and the Omniscience and Betshira is revealed to a mortal, then the Betshira will no longer exist. Because then by the growth of the Sekel, he will leave the ranks of mortals and rise to the ranks of the angels and his Betshira will be no more. From this you should understand that you should not let such paradoxes as the omniscience and the Betshira disconcert your mind, for at present there's no way to understand this Sekel of the omniscience and the Betshira, and they are the realm of Makif that cannot enter the mind in this world, which is the world of Betshira, for the essence of the faculty of Betshira is not knowing the intellect of the omniscience and the Betshira, Ibid, 4, 7. When a person shows lack of respect for the true Zadik, the light of the Sekel and the Dot is hidden from him, and he is unable to attain new Torah concepts. He's like a dead person. Ibid, 6, 8. Sometimes the consciousness and divine awareness, Mochin and Shefa Eliki, are obscured for a person, as if in pregnancy. It is very good then to cry out as he prays or studies. Thereby new divine consciousness is born. Ibid. 7. 9. The mind is man's very essence. Wherever a person's thoughts are, that is where his whole being is. So a person needs to totally run away from bad thoughts. In order to not acquire his place there, God forbid, he must force himself to think good thoughts in order that he merits to get to know Hashem Yitbarak, and then he's actually there. He's merged with his blessedness. The more he knows God, the more he becomes merged with him, and he attains everlasting life, merits perfection of the dot, and is delivered from lack of anything. As mentioned, Ibid, 11, 10, all the harsh judgments, 
God forbid, are drawn from lack of the dot. This is why a sick person, who is under the sway of harsh judgments and constricted consciousness, is filled with anger, but by expanding one's dot, the harsh judgments are eliminated, and the anger and unkindness are dissipated, and great loving kindness is attained, to know that everything that happens to him, it's all for the good, because it's all for his ultimate good. Ibid. 12. 11. All the greatness and prosperity that the nations of the world currently enjoy, it's all for our ultimate good and greatness. Even though presently it's impossible to understand all this, for we cannot deny the realities of what we see evidently before us, nevertheless in the future the Da'a will grow to the point where even the nations of the world themselves will know and understand that all the greatness and advantages they enjoy are all for our benefit. Ibid. 13. 12. The main consolation from all the suffering, the essence of all our hope, and the essence of the life of the coming world and its pleasure, lies only in the attainment of the holy dot, which is to truly know his blessedness. And as mentioned above, everyone will be purified and attain this in the future to come. Even the nations of the world, as it's written, Isa, 11 to 9, for the world will be filled with knowledge of Hashem, etc. But there will be a great difference between the understanding that they will attain and ours. For that which is considered by them a great and wondrous perception will be for us a laugh and a simple thing. Even within the Israelite people themselves there will be great differences between the various Zadikim, and all the more so between the just and the wicked. For each person will attain according to his devotions, effort and toil that he toiled strove and endured bitterness in this world for the sake of Hashem Yitbarak. Even great Zadikim when they arrive in the coming world at the perceptions attained in this world. By a greater Zadik, they will be awesome matters for him. And they will be blaze and glow from them whilst for this Zadik that's greater than them it will be mere simple thing. For he attained these perceptions even in this world so that which he attains in the coming world, will be utterly huge. And similarly between one person and another. Understand this well and be well warned about these things. Make sure that you prepare yourself for the eternal life of the world to come. If you become wise, the wisdom is yours. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 12. Ibid. 11 to 15. 13. When a person thinks good thoughts in Torah and devotions, thereby he merits knowing and understanding more all the time, and thereby he's protected from all lurking evil, ambushers and attackers, and the destroying forces all flee from him, and he needn't fear them at all. Ibid. 16. 14. The month of Elul is the time most mesugal for attaining dot. That is, to attain the Makafin the transcendent comprehensions surrounding your sekel, and bring the makif inward and make it penny me, internal. When you bring, the makafin, within your comprehension you create, new makafin in, new garments for your neshama, which, disguises, and protects you from all the ambushers, attackers, and destroying angels, as mentioned, Ibid. 15. When a person does some miswa, there's a power in the Miswa to awaken all the worlds toward serving Hashem Yitbarak. This draws Baraha, blessing and increase, to all the worlds. The essence of the Baraha that is bestowed from above is Sekel, intellect, and when it comes down, it's made for each individual according to his Ratzin, will, accordingly, whoever is a Baal Nefesh, cares for his soul, needs to direct his Ratzin to draw Burkat Hasekel, increase his divine intellect, and he needs to draw Amuna, faith, into Burkat Hasekel, the blessing of the intellect, because the Sekel alone is not to be relied on, as we know, also by the Penamiyat Ha Barakat, inner aspects of the blessing, that are drawn by the Miswa, the Miyashev Umzadar at H.A. Mochin, the settling and organizing agent of the mind, is nit barek, blessed and increased etc.
and by means of all this he gets privileged to attain the light that is higher than nefesh ruach neshama etc which is the light of the ein Sof, the infinite that is impossible to attain in any sekel except by performing the miswat in simcha and he attains it in the category of mate willo mate reaching but not reaching etc see there number 24 24 16 every person needs to extract himself from the medema beastly imagination and fantasy and rise up to the sekel divine intellect and not pursue those to what he medumiyot phantasmic cravings the beastly cravings just follow the sekel for the sekel keeps a person away from all the cravings entirely and all the cravings are the opposite of the sekel and they're only by the power of the medema imagination which is the coach habamayut the beastly force for a behema beast also has this coach and it too gets misled by these tawat and when he's drawn after the medema in his heart this is sarirat lev letting the heart rule and lead dut 29 to 18 when he follows the medema in his heart and does actual beastly acts so he needs to escape from sarirat halav and break his heart of stone and follow the sekel 25 to 1 17 even if he's already broken his medema power of nonsense fantasy thereby establishing the proper rule of his sekel intellect nevertheless his sekel is still bacoic in a potential state and not actual so he needs to utilize his sekel meaning use it to probe and contemplate in the service of hashem then when he probes using his sekel and utilizes it then he brings his sekel from out of coach potential into poel actual then when he attains in his sekel whatever a mortal person is capable of attaining then this is what remains of him after passing away the essential existence and permanence of a person's life after death is none other than this sekel de kadusha holy intellect on the side of good that he acquired and attained in torah and devotions 25 to 1 18 when a person's dibber speech lacks dot holy knowledge and awareness it contains no tab good then his speech is neither listened to nor accepted then it's not called dibber speech at all for dibber that's not heard or listened to is not called dibber 29 to 1 19 tikkun hadaber repair and proper condition of one's speech comes by praising the zadikum for by praising the zadikum you elevate the dot holy knowledge then you receive the dibber speech from the dot that's when it contains good only then is your speech is listened to and received this is tikkun haklali for one's dibber speech ibid 2 10 20 you need to know that the whole world is full of his glory and there's no place devoid of him and he both fills all the worlds and is sov of them transcends encompasses and moves them even if and when a person has to be involved in commerce among the gentiles he cannot excuse himself and say he cannot serve hashem yitbarik due to the avayu coarseness and thickness and gashmayut materiality that constantly bears down on him due to the business he's constantly involved in among them for even in every worldly thing and every language of the nations he can find godliness within them for without his godliness they could have no chiyut vitality or kayum existence at all it's just that the lower the level of something the more his divinity there is more in zimtsum contraction and more covered in veils 32 to 2 21 therefore you need to know that even if you are sunk in the very lair of the clipot husks on such a bottommost level that you think it is impossible for you to draw closer to his blessedness since you're too far from him nevertheless no even where you're at there too you can find his godliness even there you can attach yourself to his blessedness and return to him in perfect repentance 4 dude 30 to 11 it is not far from you it is only that where you are 
The veils are thicker. Ibid. 22. This person who masters his Yetzer Hara, evil inclination, and subdues it is really like an angel of the Lord of Hosts. Malach H. Zeveyat, and he can find letters of Torah even where materialism is rampant. Even when he has to talk with idolaters or notice their characteristics, he knows the godly. Vitality. The letters of Torah that are veiled inside. The secrets of Torah. The hidden Torah of the Ancient of Days. Oraida Datika Sedima is revealed to him, and he tastes the light of the love that is in Dot. Arhahava Shebda, an Ahava that is above time in the Midah. Attributes. And he perceives the light and goodness that are hidden away. Or Ha Tav Aganas. The hidden Torah and hidden Zadikim. 33 to 3, 5, 23. As a person advances in levels, he gets closer to Hashem Yitbarak with less veils and concealments. He can get to know Hashem Yitbarak with a deep understanding and reach an extraordinary kind of love between him and Hashem Yitbarak. Ibid. 2, 24. Each individual has to connect his heart to his dot. Knowledge and awareness of Hashem. Because every member of Yisrael knows in a general sense that there's a God. And this dot certainly ought to make all his cravings and bad traits go away. But the evil are under the sway of their hearts. Beer. Rabbah. 34. And the heart is the seed of all the passions and midot of an individual. This is why each person must connect his heart to his dot. So he's in control of his heart. So his heart and cravings are encompassed by this dot. So he has such a knowledge of Hashem Yitbarak in a universal way that the whole world is full of his glory, that all his cravings are eliminated by this Yadaya knowledge. Thereby he can attain the Orha Ahava Shebdat which is the Orha Ganas, which is the hidden Torah and the hidden Zadikim. 33-7. 25. Chakma. Wisdom is the root and source of everything. This is why every person needs to guard his sekel, mind, from all sikliyat chitsaniyot, foreign ideologies, the only real and essential wisdom for acquiring shlimit, wholeness and perfection, is chakmat, ilakut, godly wisdom, all other idea systems are futile, they cannot really be called wisdoms at all. 35 to 1, 26. From the time a person is born his sekel, mind, is in a state of zimtzum, contraction, if and when he starts using it in hitbonut, contemplation of Hashem's greatness and holy devotions, that's when his sekel starts growing. But when a person admits makshavat chitsaniyot, alien thinking, into his mind, they are chokmat chitsaniyot, foreign ideologies, then the sanctity of his sekel, mind, is diminished in direct proportion to the space occupied by the Chakma Chitsanit. Around this Sekel Ha Chitsan all the evil and odious character traits accumulate and join together. Ibid. 27. That is why one has to be so careful to guard his mind and not allow any foreign thinking to enter. In. And it's the key to repentance and repairing all his sins, when he makes a determined effort to expel and keep out all foreign thoughts from his mind because the sekel is the neshama soul so sanctifying his mind is sanctifying his soul and this is the way to lift his soul higher and bring back everything to its source this is the the entire root of teshava ibid 28 just guarding oneself from foreign idea systems is not enough you must always try to bring new vitality into your sekel mind this is how you revive and refresh your neshama soul because the sekel is the neshama that gives life to the body as written echo 712 wisdom is what gives life ibid 2 29 none are more prone to the attacks of the yetzer hara evil inclination which is the aspect of the primordial serpent than talmud chakamim and torah scholars since they have the biggest minds. Dot. It's always stalking them the most. Since they have a higher neshama. Which is the sekel. Mind. 
The main thing is to carefully guard against evil thoughts. Because they are the basis on which the Yetzer Hara builds. God forbid. Ibid. 1. 30. Sleep revitalizes the Sekel, mind, and thus the Neshama, soul. Because when the Mochen, brain, are tired then sleep recharges them. During sleep the Mochen, mind, and hence the Neshama, soul, enters into Amuna, faith, as in, Job chapter 3 verse 23. New to the morning, great is thy faith f. Ibid. 3. 31. There's many kinds of sleep. There's physical sleep which is good for the mochen. Brains. Some Torah learning is also a sleep relative to Devakit. Cleaving. Communion. With the Blessed One. And that's learning Pash De Orita. Basic levels of Torah. So someone that's constantly wrapped up in devotions to the Creator and his mochen are tired due to so much Devakit. He should study Pash De Orita. There's also sleep found in Masa U Matan Bamuna. Lit. Commerce in faith. When doing Masa U Matan Bamuna, then his mochen i.e. his neshama enters in Amuna and gets revitalized there and refreshed from its exhaustion. And he draws a new sekel. Mind. From the Orha Panam. Light of the face. The main point and the purpose is to carefully guard the Amuna. So when his mochen, mind, is tired he needs to revive it in the Amuna through some kind of sleep. Whether it's simple physical sleep which is when the mochen are renewed as we can see tangibly. But again the main point and purpose is the Amuna. So before sleeping you need to attach yourself to the Amuna which this is the aspect of Kriyat Shma. Shial Hamida that we recite before sleep. You need to read it with Kavana. Intent. In order to hook up your Nishama and insert it inside the Amuna during sleep. And then your Nesama will be revitalized in there. As in, new to the morning. Great is thy faith. As mentioned. By sleeping you'll be able to get a new Sekel. Mind. And new Nishama. Soul. From the Orha Panam. Likewise whoever has some kind of devakit and it has made his moch tired. He needs to then occupy himself in Pash De Oriita and enter inside the Amuna while doing so. Meaning, since his moch starts to get confused and he's no longer able to cleave to Hashem Yitbarak in the aspect of Dot and Mochen, by way of mind and brain, mentally, then he needs to just remove his dot and mochen entirely and hook himself up to the Amuna in Pishitude and occupy himself in Pash De Orita in Temimit. Simplicity. And Amuna Shalema. Because actually whenever you're maintaining your mochen in Devakit or any kind of level, even then the main thing that sustains the mind is Amuna. For, you cannot rely on Sekel. Mind. Alone. Like we've explained above in number 15. But when the mind goes away you need to enter into the Amuna alone. Through some kind of sleep as mentioned. Similarly, doing commerce is sometimes a kind of sleep that can renew his moch. As mentioned. And there too the main point and purpose is the Amuna. When he's doing commerce in Amuna. Then his Nishama which is his Sekel. Mind enters inside the Amuna and gets revitalized there as mentioned. Ibid. 4. 6. 32. Protecting the Amuna comes by performing. Peas. 15-2. Widover Emmet Bilvevo, and speaks truth in his hearts during commerce etc. See money number 21. 33. Any Israelite person, before his soul has any manifestation in Torah or devotions, his nephesh, his soul and personhood, are tried and tested in the exile of the seventy nations. 4. Each of the seventy nations has its own special bad trait that's not in any of the others. And due to these bad traits they are estranged from the seventy faces of Torah. In Klippa Kadma Lapri, the husk precedes the fruit that grows inside, and whoever wants to eat the fruit has to first break the klippa. So this is why before manifestation of the dot, mind, which is manifestation of the Torah which is the essence of the true and real dot and chakma, his nefesh has to go in exile. 
which means going into those very traits and cravings of the nations, in order that he should break them and then be able to get to revelation in Torah and devotions. And the main thing is to break the sexual craving which is the encompassment of all the bad cravings and traits. So this is the main test and trial. Now when the man's nephesh enters in this test, this exile, this trial, of the attacks of the cravings and traits, the main one being the sexual one as mentioned, then he needs to raise his voice and cry out with a lot of cries, which are comprised of 70 kolot, sounds or voices, at least just like a woman prior to giving birth, cries 70 cries. By doing this he'll be able to break this craving, as well as all the others, and he'll attain a big revelation in Torah and devotions. Proportionate to the Tikkun he accomplishes they will reveal him the seventy faces of the Torah. 36 to 1. 34. A man needs to try to reach the ultimate complete dot, meaning that he attains all the awareness of holiness that's possible for a man to know and perceive and when there's no more that a man can know, but he cannot attain this except by having some involvement with people, drawing them into serving Hashem Yitbarak. That's how Shida can reach completion. It also causes him to beget children, and to be able to cause barren women to conceive. 53. 35. And this is the reason why the Zadikim make outreach efforts with people, drawing them toward serving his blessedness. It's not in order to boost their honor and status. God forbid. It's only so they can reach this completion of Dot. Ibid. 36. A person has to take a good look at the paths he traverses, thoroughly inspecting and pondering all the factors and affairs that Hashem Yitbarak makes him encounter and that he brings about for him each and every day. For every single day has its own thought, speech and action that's different from any other days. And you need to know that Hashem Yitbarak constructs his divinity down from the Ein Sof, infinite down to the infinitesimal, down to the most concentrated points of the physical earth upon which a man stands, and brings each person such thought, speech and action according to the day and person and place, enveloping hints inside them in order to draw him to serve him. So a person has to look at all this, growing his dot and sekel, mind, gazing and pondering all the thought, speech and action that Hashem Yitbarak summons him each day, trying to infer what it is that Hashem Yitbarak is hinting to him in them, to draw him to himself, continually and at all places, because all the affairs and all exchanges and all things in the world that Hashem Yitbarak summons for him each day, contain in them particular hints that his blessedness is hinting to the man, always, to draw him to himself, so he needs to develop his dot and take a good look at all this. 54 to 2, 37. But you need to be careful to limit your dot, mind, so that you don't get too deep in your thought, so that you don't overstep the bounds of holiness. This means not letting your thoughts get duped into speculations and confusions by doing that. God forbid. Only expand your thoughts into this within what a mortal sekel, mind, can think, and in doing this do not gaze into what is beyond your level, because, seek not things concealed from you. Ibid. 38. Tall people are usually foolish. 55-6. 39. You need to guard yourself well against having too much chokma. Conceptions. Don't let your chakma exceed your deeds, because the main way to make the heart strong, so that it should follow the truth, Hashem Yitbarak and his holy Torah, is none other than good works. But anyone whose sekel, intelligent designs, are more than his good deeds, hasn't the power in his heart to properly make his sekel whole in sanctity. Then his sekel will make him err more. This is why you need to stay clear of excess chokmat of this world's nonsense chokmat. Most of all stay clear of philosophy. Just annul your sekel to the Anshai Emmet, men of truth, that go in the way of Emmet according to what they received from our rabbis OBM. See Shakiro number 6. Ibid. 40. 
You need to know that within all the Hastero concealments in the world Hashem Yitbarak is hidden. For there are two kinds of Hastero. Because there's Hastara and there's concealment where the concealment itself concealed. Now when Hashem Yirbarak is hidden under one veil, he is also very hard to find. But nevertheless it's possible to toil and probe until you find his blessedness. Since you know that Hashem Yitbarak is hiding from you, but when Hashem Yitbarak is hidden in a hidden concealment, meaning the very fact that he's concealed is so hidden from you that you have no idea that Hashem Yitbarak is hidden from you, then it's extremely hard to find his blessedness. And this is extends from our great many sins. God spare us. For whoever transgresses repeatedly feels like it's permissible. This is like one concealment. But whoever transgresses more, God forbid, falls into the aspect of hidden concealment. But really, there too within the hidden concealment Hashem Yitbarak is found hidden. For without his blessedness giving it vitality nothing in the world could exist this is why by the power of being involved in Torah you can flip all the concealments into dot information. To know that there even their Hashem Yitbarak is found hidden even in the strongest hidden concealments. Until you hear the great beckoning voice of the Torah which constantly cries out. Ad Matai Pethayim Tehavu Pethi, how long? O oh foolish ones, will you love folly, etc., until he returns to Hashem from whatever place he may be. 56 to 3. 41. The larger you expand your dot. Mind. The easier your livelihood. Whoever is more lacking in dot strives and toils for his livelihood the most. Ibid. 6. 42. The more you expand your dot the greater your peace. Because strife. Anger and cruelty is due to lack of dot. So the more dot, the more Rachmanat goodness, chesed, kindness, and peace, and thereby you attain healing. Ibid. 43. Anger makes a person lose his mind and the image of God detaches from his face so he hasn't nay. Adam. A face of man. See cause. Anger number 4. 57 to 6. 44. The key to making your dot, mind, endure, i.e. on earth and in time, lies in three practices. Namely, you need to teach your chakma, wisdom, to others and draw them under the wings of the shahina. You also need to give priority to fearing sin more than gaining chakma. And you need to be attentive to detail. How to transmit your chakma, in a way that your speech be, echo, 10-12. Divre Pai Chakam Chen, the words of the sage's mouth are charmed, and not disregarded. Then your dot will allow you draw the three bounties, which are, food, drink, and clothing. 58 to 5, 45, when your chakma, enlightenment, is lasting and complete, then you have the ability to subdue the the afflictors that pick on the weak stragglers among. Yisrael and bring the latter into serving Hashem Yitbarak and thereby attain a double amount of original Torah insights on Shabbat. Ibid. 46. The main bliss of the coming world is thanking and praising His Blessedness's great name and knowing and recognizing His Blessedness, which is what brings a person near to His Blessedness. For the more you recognize and know the Blessed One the closer you are to Him because everything else will pass away in the future and nothing else will remain besides this. Thanking, praising and knowing the Blessed One. This is what the bliss of the coming world will be. LM 2. 2. 47. The main thing what constitutes a man is his dot. Mind. Whoever has no dot is not from the world inhabited by mankind, and is not called called Adam at all. He's just an animal that resembles a man. And the main dot is the dot of holiness. The dot of our holy Torah. To know that there's God that rules and supervises over the earth. And to perform the will and the mitzvah of his blessedness. And when you perfect this dot you are saved from all kinds of mistakes and sins. 4. No man does a transgression unless a spirit of folly enters in him. But when he draws this holy, dot on himself, 
remembering Hashem Yitbarak at all times. He definitely escapes mistakes. 7. 48. What causes people of the world to be far from Hashem Yitbarak and not follow his blessedness is none other than they have no Yeshuv Ha. Dot. Settlement of the mind. They don't bring their mind to settle on the purpose of life. So the main thing is to try to totally settle your mind. What's the end of all the cravings and all of what goes on in this world? Whether it's the cravings a person takes into his body or the external ones such as honor and so. Fourth, then he will definitely turn back to Hashem. 10. 49. The main way to attain Yeshuv Hadad is by Simha. Being happy. Because when you're happy your mind is at ease and you can lead your moch brain like you want to and think about about your eternal purpose but melancholy and sadness drive the moch and dot into exile so a person's mind cannot be made up so sadness is a most severe obstacle to serving hashem yitbarak ibid 50 whoever has a perfect dot knows that all the time in the world is nothing at all because time is essentially due to lack of knowledge but the more you grow your sekel mind the more you see and understand time is nothing. Read the lesson which explains this thoroughly. Even tangibly you can see that time is utterly fleeting. Just like a passing shadow. A cloud that evaporates. And so forth. If you pay attention to this you will save yourself from many worries of this world and you'll be very motivated to always grab whatever you can. That will bring you success in the eternity. Where it's entirely above time. Because that's the Olam Ha Nitzchi, the eternal world. 61. 51. There are many kinds of nonsense that get attached to a person's moch. Mind. Especially confusions that affect one's faith. And these get detached from the moch during sleep. So sleep is extremely beneficial for Amuna. Sisho 110. 52. Being seen by the Zadok Hae Met causes your mind to shine and brings you greatness and authority. Proportionate to the shining of your mind. This allows you to attain new Torah insights that are fitting for you. And this leads you to shame. Repentance and true humility. Which is the theme of the eternal life of the coming world. See Gawa Wanava number 30. 2. 72. 53. The essence of humility is realizing chakma. Wisdom. As far from you. It's a clever thing and a lot of work to consider yourself a beast. See Temimit. 83 and Sisho 15. 54. It takes a big privilege to get yourself alone and still for a time period each day. And to have regret for whatever needs regretting. Because not every person is privileged to have Yeshuv Hadat. A settled mind to do this every day. So you have to motivate yourself a great deal to see to it to reflect on all your actions and behaviors. Is it right to spend your days doing such things? Sisho 47. D-I-B-B-U-R. Speech. It's enormous power for good. And for the opposite. God forbid. 1. Wasted speech and slander cause poverty. But charity to Talmudai Chakamim repairs this and leads to wealth. 4 to 8. 2. By speaking words of Torah, your speech will illuminate for you all the places where you need to make Teshuva. So much so that you can attain complete Teshuva. This lets you reach the deepest understandings of the Torah. See Talmud Torah number 10 and 11. 11 to 1. 3. By perfection of Lashon HaKodesh the holy language, and hence the sanctity of speech, speaking a great deal of words of Torah, prayer, supplications, requests, and chat with your Creator, and being careful to not speak blemished speech, which is slander, lies and so forth, thereby a person attains Tikkun Habrit, repair of the covenant, conversely by Tikkun Habrit you attain perfection of Lashon HaKodesh, 19-3. 4. Speech that doesn't get heard or accepted can't be called speech at all. Tikkun Hadaver, when it's heard and accepted, comes by saying words of praise of the true Zadikim. This is Tikkun Haklali, general remedy, for your speech. 
29 to 1, 2, 5. Speech is the instrument and the vessel for blessings. Through it the flow of blessings is received. Blessings are received according to how one's speech is. If his words are perfect and filled to their potential, then a person can receive abundant blessings in them, etc. For this to happen you need to pray with the words actually spoken out. 34 to 3, 6. When a person blemishes, the power of speech, which is the holy blessed one's breath of his mouth, the blemish makes the breath of his mouth into the storm wind. This storm wind is a major accuser from which come all the accusers and trials, and it makes a man's body tempest all the tale bearing and evils that are spoken about a person are due to this storm wind, for it's the aspect of Gen. 6.13, Ketz Kol Basar, the end of all flesh, which brings all flesh to an end. And all this is due to abuse of speech. 38-2, 7. Repair of one's speech comes by learning Torah in poverty and under pressure when it's hard for a man. By this accord of chesed, kindness, is drawn to him, and drives away all the accusers and all citra demsiva, side of filth, and this repairs his speech and raises it to its source. Then his speech comes out in song, praise and rejoicing to the Holy Blessed One, for being privileged to pray, to thank and to extol his blessed name. And this allows him to speak to his Creator with ardent flames as he excites himself in serving Hashem Yitbarak, until he merits true speech in the utmost truth that can exist in speech. Meaning he speaks before Hashem Yitbrak with the truly greatest honesty, laying out his speech and speaking with the simple innocence that's in his heart. Words of truth from the heart with excitement for Teshava, until he sees his shortcomings and the greatness of the Creator. Until this brings him to an enormous bashfulness, to be embarrassed before his blessedness due to the enormity of his sins etc and thereby he'll attain the light of the tefillin which are the aspect of cleaving to Hashem, Yitbarak, which are the aspect of Gen. 34, the radiance of the skin of his face, and by this all his sins are forgiven and he attaches himself to the tree of life. See Busha number 2, Ibid. 4, 5, 8. One must be very careful not to hear words from a wicked person who has dot knowledge, for his words are poisonous air of promiscuity that causes promiscuity in those that hear it. 43, 9, but words that don't, get directed, to holiness stimulate the Sukkot of the Christians, the Sukkot of the idolaters, and make their, peace, 144 to 11, Yamin Sheker, right hand of falsehood, how an oath is made, to gain the upper hand and make the exile more severe, and they distance everything from the sanctity of Eretz Yisrael, which causes a great deal of the truth to go concealed. So riv, fighting, and controversy prevail. Then the Shahina is R.I.V. with the Holy One, for the sake of her children in the exile who are gone exiled from their father's table and from their land. But holy words, which are enthusiastic prayer, energize the truth etc. See Tefila number 45, 48, 10. Bad speech and slander causes the power of imagination to overcome a person, because it makes his dot, wisdom, leave him and he falls from the love of the Blessed One and into the love of animality which is all, the cravings which all stem from the power of imagination which is the animalistic force that gets very strengthened by talking bad speech. This damages the faculty of memory and he succumbs to shikecha, forgetfulness, which is death of the heart, where his heart dies within him and he can't put his heart to remember every day the alma de te, the coming world, which that's where the essential main eternal life and vitality is. Even whilst living he's worth as much as dead. Since he can't put his heart to remember his eternal purpose every day. 54 to 5. 11. Bad speech can cause a person to not have male descendants that endure. Ibid. 
4, 12. When the generation doesn't guard their mouth from slander and other damaged speech, it can God forbid cause the pious people of the times to stumble into arrogance, which is an aspect of the Shahina being in exile. 58 to 10, 13. Craving food and drink causes the power of speech to be dragged into exile, into the straight of the throat by the back of the neck. And this makes it that he can't say one utterance to Hashem Yitbarak. The remedy for this is fasting. 62 to 5, 14. Bad speech such as slander, tale bearing, lies, mockery, adulation, servile flattery, or embarrassing one's fellow with words, lewd speech, useless talk, and all the other kinds of bad speech, and especially if someone badmouths Zadikum and pious people, all these bad utterances give wings to the serpent, making him able to fly and to cause people a great deal of harm. God forbid. Namely it causes philosophy and hedonism, which are the aspect of the primordial serpent, to spread throughout the world, as their evil ideology gains the upper hand and the ability to fly. God forbid. Due to these above-mentioned forms of bad speech, and this causes tremendous damage in the world. But by holy utterances you can make the wings for holiness to fly around the world. 63. 15. A person needs to serve Hashem Yitbarak with every drop of blood that's in him. Namely he needs to speak such a vast amount of Torah and prayer that all his blood is made into holy speech of Torah ADN prayer. Then he'll attain peace and nullify all the expanses of contentiousness and strife. For the trait and dimension of contentiousness and strife and war are all drawn from those bloods, with which he has still not served Hashem Yitbarak. 75. 16. By words of Torah and prayer you raise up all the fallen sparks and all the fallen worlds are repaired and refreshed and it's considered like you created the heavens and the earth and all the worlds anew. This is why you need to speak only holy words and no other speech, in order to lift up the sparks and repair all the worlds. This makes Mashiach's coming draw closer. Ibid. 17. You need to speak so much Torah and prayer to the point that your body is completely cancelled out. Like it's nothing and non-existent. You attain this by fearing him. And the fear brings you peace and by peace all the blessings come. Ibid. 18. Sacred speech, meaning words of Torah and prayer and fear of heaven, is extremely lofty and precious. Because sacred speech is in the category of the Shekinah, the category of the revelation of the Blessed One's kingship and faithfulness. This is the category of Mashiach's spirit and the aspect of the Holy Spirit and the aspect of revival of the dead, the aspect of the unity of the Holy Blessed One with His Shahina. 78. 19. Also speech is the aspect of Peace. 113-9. Am Habanam, the mother of children. Meaning just as the mother always goes with her child even into unclean places and can't forget him. So too a man's speech follows always follows him even unto the most unclean places and constantly reminds him of Hashem Yitbarak, meaning even if the person is deep down at the lowest possible level, nevertheless using words he can always remind himself of Hashem Yitbarak, meaning even if he's where he is, if in that place too he bolsters himself to anyhow speak holy words of Torah and prayer and chatting with his creator or talking with his rabbi or his friend regarding fear of heaven. He can remind himself of Hashem Yibarak any time even there in places that are the utterly farthest from Hashem Yibarak which are in the category of unclean places. Even if he's fallen in whatever situation he's in, God save us, because his speech never lets him forget Hashem Yibarak. Understand this well. How great is the power of speech. And it's a wondrous and awesome advice for whoever truly doesn't want to totally lose his eternal world. God forbid. Ibid. 20. All words are expressions of power and need to be sweetened. 
The sweetness comes through the study of Torah and speaking good words. Therefore, one must be very careful to guard one's speech and not speak evil words. Especially Lashon Hara, slander, all the more so, one needs to be very, very careful not to speak evil. God forbid, in order for a Zadok not to be overcome by harsh judgments. God forbid, and through these evil words, it is possible to cause the Zadok of the generation to fall from his level. God forbid, when he does not possess great ability to sweeten these strong powers or remove them. God forbid, through this, and then, through its removal, his soul is sweetened from these mentioned powers above. 207. 21. When a person sits to judge his fellow, this is a form of the day of judgment, for he sits and judges his fellow. One must be very careful and examine oneself well if he is fit to judge his fellow. For judgment belongs to God. As our sages of blessed memory said, don't judge your friend until you have reached his place. And who can know and reach his fellows? Place but God alone. LM 2114. 22. The main fulfillment and perfection of speech is through truth. Through this, one merits through praising and thanking God. And through learning Halisho, Jewish laws. Through this, all lines of truth are illuminated in all realms of speech. And speech is perfected. Through this, one merits the perfection of speech, which is a form of the holy language connected to Shabbat, and so on. See Emmet Wamuna 40, 2, 23. Speech has an extremely great power. Therefore, one should greatly increase Torah study, prayer, supplications, and requests, and even more so, in speech and conversations between oneself and their Creator. If one is strong in this throughout their life, they will definitely merit a good future in this world and in the world to come forever. See Hitbadejit and the above number 19 regarding the greatness of the power of speech. 96. Hey, Hitboded UT, alone time talking with God. 1. A. Whoever wants to taste the taste of the hidden light, which are the secrets of the Torah that will be revealed in the future, should engage in seclusion between himself and his Creator, and judge and evaluate himself at all times regarding all his actions and deeds, if it is appropriate and fitting for him to do so, and to conduct himself in such a way before the Blessed Name, who bestows goodness upon him at all times and moments, and to carefully follow his commandments in justice, and in all things to judge himself with himself, and he himself shall judge and evaluate himself regarding all his actions and deeds. And through this, all fears and fallen fears shall be removed from him, that he shall not fear or be afraid of any prince, lord, evil spirit, or misfortune, and not fear anything in the world, but only fear and be afraid of the blessed name alone. And through this, he shall elevate fear to its root, that is, to know and merit to know perfect fear, to fear only the glorious name, fear of exaltation, and by this he will merit to attain the revealed Torah, and merit genuine humility, and through this, he will merit praying with self-sacrifice, that he will nullify all his inclinations and physicality during prayer, and pray without any personal benefit or consideration but rather nullify his ego and physicality as if he does not exist in the world. And through this, he will merit attaining the secrets of the Torah, which is the hidden light that will be revealed in the future. And all this is achieved through seclusion as mentioned above. 15. 2. The words that a person speaks and communicates between himself and his Creator are a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. For by entering into this and forcing himself and preparing himself to speak before the Blessed Name, the Blessed Name will send him words in his mouth that are a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And one must see and strive to constantly renew, to seek at all times with desirable words and new supplications. And this is achieved through the purification of the heart, 
achieved through the movements of the intellect in holiness, etc., as elucidated in the aforementioned statement. Dot 3. 159. 3. By engaging in conversation and speaking between themselves and their Creator, and expressing their hidden and good desires, which they yearn and long for, with the intention of leaving their current negative state and attaining true goodness, and by praying and pleading before the Blessed Name for this purpose, they bring forth good souls from potentiality into actuality, for through the hidden desires alone, souls are formed in potentiality, and through the aforementioned speech, they are completed and brought from potentiality into actuality, and through this, one merits to act according to their desire and is able to shape the letters of the Torah for good, bring them to life, and fulfill everything. It draws forth goodness and blessing in all worlds and it arouses repentance in many souls through this speech that takes place between themselves and their Creator. Indeed, the matter of hidden desires and good intentions, and expressing them verbally, is extremely precious and every individual should accustom oneself to engage in this extensively every day. And through this, they can bring the entire world to goodness. 31, 8 to 9, 4. In every individual of Israel, there is a precious and strong good point, whose desire is constantly to only do the will of its Creator. However, desires break its heart and therefore the heart is distant from the good point, Therefore, every individual must speak between themselves and their Creator, so that the good point in their heart will shine and through this, the uncircumcision of the heart, that is, the evil desires that break the heart of man, will be nullified. See Zadok 42, 34-4, 7, 8, 5. Every individual must accustom oneself to speak honestly between themselves and their Creator until they are ashamed before the Blessed Name, acknowledging the great magnitude of their sins, as they are compared to a multitude of great rulers and roots of all worlds. See Busha 2 and Dibber 7, 38-8, 6. Each one must see that he will be included in his root, and in order to be included in his root, he must be nullified, and it is impossible to come to nullification except through isolation. For by isolating himself between himself and his Creator, through this he can nullify everything and cling to the Blessed Name and be included in his root. 52. 7. The essence of isolation is at night when everything is asleep, and also when the place is outside the city, where one walks alone, meaning in a place where there are no people going, even during the day. And through this, by isolating oneself at night, walking alone as aforementioned, and turning his heart and mind away from all the affairs of this world and nullifying everything, to the point where he completely nullifies himself. Meaning, at first, he prays a lot until he nullifies this attribute, and afterwards he nullifies this attribute, and then he nullifies himself completely, so that he has no pride or substance at all until he is in his own eyes like nothingness and complete emptiness, until he merits reaching the state of true nullification, and through this, his soul is included in its root, and through this, the entire world is included with him in its root, meaning that everything is included with him in his unity. Blessed be he, Ibid, 8. The night is the main time for isolation, namely to isolate oneself between oneself and one's Creator, to present one's conversation before the Blessed Name, to rejoice with one's heart, to seek the Good Spirit. This means to clarify the good points that still exist within oneself, to purify them from the evil spirit until one's heart pours forth like water before the face of the Lord. And through this, one will merit joy in suppressing the imitator, from whom all desires originate, and through this, one will merit constant remembrance in the world to come, and to constantly contemplate his ultimate purpose and final end, until he is able to return to him in truth. 54. End.
9. When a person prays with attachment or isolates himself appropriately and in the midst of it, he falls from his level. This is a result of a defect in faith. At that point, he needs to break his heart within himself and feel ashamed for falling from heaven to earth. He should have mercy on himself until he finds rest. And through this rest he can return to his original level. 108. 10. When one speaks before the Blessed Creator and explains his thoughts with requests and desires, and wishes to prevail before the Blessed Creator, it is possible for the Blessed Creator to take pleasure and joy from the fact that we prevail. Therefore, he himself sends words to him in his mouth, so that he can prevail. For without this, it would certainly not be possible for flesh and blood to prevail before the Blessed Creator. Rather, the Blessed Creator himself helps him with this. As mentioned above, 124, 11. When a person isolates himself and explains his thoughts and his sorrow before the Blessed Creator, and confesses and repents for the great defects he has caused, then the Divine Presence also reveals and explains its thoughts and sorrows before him. For all the defects and flaws that occurred in his soul also cause defects in the Divine Presence, and it comforts him, seeking solutions to fix all the defects. 259, 12. It is very good to pray and express one's thoughts before the Blessed Creator in the field, among the grass and trees. For when a person prays and expresses his thoughts in the field, all the grass and all the vegetation of the field come into his prayer and assist him, giving him strength in his prayer and thoughts. 2. 11. 13. Already it is explained that seclusion is a great elevation and a very proper and righteous way to draw closer to the Blessed Creator. Therefore, each person must establish for themselves certain times during the day when they can verbalize their thoughts before the Blessed One in the language they speak, such as in our countries. In the Ashkenazi language we speak, because in the language we speak, it is easier to express all of one's thoughts well, and all that is in one's heart, to speak before the Blessed One with pleas, truths, and desired words and supplications, so that one may be able to draw closer to the Blessed One according to their own understanding of their heart's condition and how distant they are from the Blessed One. The greatness of this practice cannot be fully explained or comprehended, for this practice encompasses all the service of the Almighty. Through this, one can achieve all goodness in this world and the world to come. For everything can be accomplished through prayer and supplications. And all the great righteous individuals did not attain their levels except through this practice. And one who understands this matter will comprehend the greatness of this practice on their own. Fortunate is the one who is privileged to establish for themselves a designated time each day. And during the rest of the day, there will be joy. 25. 14. Indeed it is good to make Torah teachings into prayers. See that lesson. 25. And understand well. Ibid. 15. Even though crying before the Blessed Name in prayers and supplications is very good. Nevertheless, when a person says psalms or other prayers or speaks to God and thinks and gazes with his knowledge, every time he cries and sheds tears, this also is a foreign thought and is confusing the intention. The main thing is that he directs his mind to say the words with all his heart in truth, that he inclines his ear and heart to hear what comes out of his mouth, and if he is moved to tears, how good, but if not, he should not confuse his intention for this. 95. 16. All the righteous and truly God-fearing individuals do not attain their spiritual level except through seclusion and conversation between themselves and their Creator. As explicitly mentioned in the Holy Zohar, especially in these generations, towards the end of the exile, when the evil inclination and the other side greatly prevail, and the generations are extremely weak in body and soul, it is impossible to be saved from the overpowering of the evil inclination and the abundance of 
distractions and to draw close to the blessed name except through conversation between oneself and their creator by setting aside a specific time each day to express one's thoughts before the blessed name in a precise manner in whatever one's heart desires whether to seek forgiveness and pardon for the past or to beseech for salvation in the future that the blessed name will rescue them from what they need to be saved from and allow them to draw near to it is very good even if they are not able to speak and express their thoughts even if they only speak one word this is also very good even if they do not speak only master of the universe this is also very good and even if the preparation itself the fact that one prepares themselves and wants to speak even if they are not able to speak even so the preparation and the intention itself are very precious in the eyes of the blessed name and if one strengthens themselves in this to force themselves each time to speak before the blessed name about what is in their heart undoubtedly with time the blessed name will help them so they can express their thoughts well and they will be able to merit speaking new and dear words that will be influenced upon them from heaven and they will come to every true and eternal good through this guidance which includes all the advice for serving the blessed name because for all the advice prayer and supplications are necessary and fortunate is the person who strengthens themselves in this for from small to great it is impossible for a person to be a righteous individual except through seclusion and conversation between themselves and their creator 25 96 100 101 17 furthermore even when reciting psalms or the midnight prayers or other supplications one must immerse themselves in them take note of the wondrous conversations that appear within these matters 2 101 18 even though it seems as if a person is speaking without intent nevertheless this is also very good and when one speaks a lot through this for the most part he will succeed because it will awaken his heart to speak with appropriate passion as speech has the power to awaken a person and even if days and years pass by and it seems to him that he has not accomplished anything with his words and conversations nevertheless he should not be discouraged because surely speech makes an impression by way of analogy like water dripping onto a stone even though it seems that water does not have the power against a hard stone and leaves no impression even so when water drips on the stone many times in a row it creates a hole in the stone as if miraculously similarly even if the heart is like a stone and no impression is discernible in his words and prayers nevertheless through many days and years his heart will be penetrated through his conversations like stones that are washed away by water as mentioned and it is good for a person to say during his personal introspection i am beginning to cleave to you and he should make a fresh start each time because all continuances follow from beginnings and just as they say that the beginning is like half of the entire action it turns out the same with your soul therefore make a fresh start each time and say as mentioned above for if your soul was good in the past now it will be even better and if god forbid it was not good from the beginning certainly it is necessary and mandatory to make a fresh beginning as mentioned 2 92 sisho heron 234 translation 19 it is necessary to rejoice and speak to oneself and between oneself and the lord and to awaken one's heart truly so much that one's soul will almost leave god forbid and this is the essence of perfect solitude 2 99 20 when the lord helps in solitude one can express his discourse before the blessed lord as a person speaks to his teacher or friend for the blessed lord can be found everywhere as his glory fills the entire earth ibid 21 it is very good for one to be able to pour out his discourse before the blessed lord in mercy and supplications 
like a child who confesses to his father. And how good it is when one can stir his heart in his discourse until he cries and sheds tears. Like a child who cries before his father. Sisho 7. 22. He can cry out with a very faint voice in a very loud outcry. And no one will hear at all because he does not make any sound outwardly. But he clearly depicts the outcry well in his thoughts. Etc. See inside the matter. Sisho 16. 23. A broken heart is very precious. And know that a broken heart and affliction are not the same thing at all. For affliction is like when one is angry and upset. But a broken heart is like a child who confesses before his father. Like an infant who cries and falls down before his father. Which is precious and beloved before the blessed Lord. And it is good for him to have a broken heart all day long. However, because most people can easily transition from a broken heart to affliction, which is very harmful, may it be God's will to protect us. As explained many times, see Joy 3 and 22. Therefore, one should allocate certain times of the day to pour out his discourse with a broken heart. And then alone he will have a broken heart, and the rest of the day will be in joy and see inside Simha for the abundance of warnings and advice to be in constant joy. Sisho 41. Hitchasket, Encouragement. 1. Anyone who wants to return to God should be very knowledgeable in Halacha, Jewish law, so that nothing in the world, neither ascent nor descent, should distance him, and in everything that he goes through, he should strengthen himself. Der Halton Zeke and realize that if I ascend to heaven, you are still beyond there. And if I descend to the depths of Sheol, behold you are there, even in the lowest depths. One can draw close to God, for even there he is found in the aspect of ascent and descent. See Teshuvah 10, 6-4, 2. The essence of God's greatness is that even those who are distant from him can draw very close to serve him, and in this, his name is exalted and elevated above and below. Therefore, a person should not despair of drawing close to the service of God. Even if he is very distant due to his many sins. Even if he has done a great deal of evil. For on the contrary, from the very fact that he is so far, he will elevate and magnify God's name all the more. As mentioned above, but the essence of drawing close for those who are far from God is through the righteous people of the generation. 10 to 2, 4, 3. Friends who are close to Zadokai Emmet and attach themselves to them should strengthen and awaken each other. And the main strengthening is through the immense strength of the Zadok Ha Emmet. That he is so great that he can elevate even the most flawed soul even if it has not yet emerged from the profane to the holy, even as thin as a hair strand, he can elevate and renew it for good with his great power. And this is the essence of each individual's strengthening, that even the lowest of the low can have hope and an incredible future forever. As long as he holds on to the true Zadok, it is also necessary that each person strengthens his companion and awakens each other and they strengthen each other in their service of God, reminding each other of all the good advice they know and understand, according to what they have received from their teachers. 13. And. 4. One must know that Hashem is glorified even with the lowest of the low among the Jews, even with the sins of the Jewish people. As long as the name of Israel is called upon him, there is in him individual glory, as Hashem is glorified with him. Therefore, a person must never despair of himself from Hashem, even if he has greatly sinned. God forbid, the love of Hashem for him has not stopped, and he can still return to Hashem. This is primarily done through truthful people who can find even the good and the glory that exists, even in the poorest among the poor, and bring everything back to Hashem's glory. 17-1 5. When a person needs to ascend from one level to another, he must have a descent before his ascent, for the descent is the purpose of the ascent. This can be understood by anyone. 
how much he needs to strengthen himself in the service of Hashem and never fall from all the falls and declines in the world. If he makes an effort to strengthen himself without looking at it in any way, even if he passes through many obstacles, he will eventually have all his falls turned into great heights. For the descent is the purpose of the ascent. There is much to say about this. As all these things are also said of the smallest and poorest of the poor. For Hashem is good to all constantly. 2211. 6. Anyone in the world, even if he is on the lowest level imaginable, if he wants to enter into the service of Hashem, he must go up from one level to another. And every time he goes up from one level to another in line with his current level, new obstacles arise in the form of desires confusion, fantasies, thoughts, and biases, and they become very strong, always challenging him as he tries to enter the gates of holiness. And they deceive the true and righteous chastidim who think they have fallen from their prior level. Because of their rising desires, confusions, and biases, and in reality, this is not a fall at all, rather, this is the process of ascending from one level to another according to his nature. And because of this, the desires, confusion, biases, and stubbornness in the heart become much stronger. And he must build himself up and not fall into this again and again until he overcomes and shatters them anew. 25 to 2, and the part of the end pertaining to 2, 7. And the advice for this is to give charity to the poor who are in need. Because the essence of the greatness of the Creator, blessed be He, is revealed through charity that is given to the deserving poor. Through this, the Holy One, blessed be He, is praised and glorified. And through this, He will subdue the husks that are the hindrances and confusions, etc., that grow stronger at every level. As mentioned above, Ibid. 4. 8. Furthermore, another advice for this is to rejoice and be glad and rejoice in his good fortune to be of the seed of Israel and to draw close to the people of truth who guide him in the path of truth. Through this, he will have a good hope for eternity. And through this joy, he will break the husks that are the hindrances, etc., at every level. Ibid. 5. 9. When he strengthens and overpowers and breaks the hindrances, etc., and each time he rises to a higher and higher level according to his level, he also benefits his friend who was standing at the same level he has now entered. Because his friend leaves that level and rises to a higher level, for it is impossible for two people to remain on the same level. This is the aspect of elevation which is called, raising the others up, as mentioned above. Ibid, and the end pertaining to 3. 10. One must know that his glory fills the entire earth, and there is no place empty of him, and he fills all worlds and surrounds all worlds, and even one who is engaged in dealings with the nations cannot apologize and say it is impossible to serve the blessed God due to his stubbornness and physicality as he always falls under the influence of the occupation that he is constantly engaged with. For in all physical things and in all the languages of the nations, one can find in them divinity. For without his divinity they have no life and no existence at all. Only in that which is of a lower order does his divinity manifest with great limitation and veil. In various garments. 33-2. 11. Therefore. You must know that even if you are deeply sunk in the realm of the shells, and you are in a very low spiritual state to the point that it seems to you that it is impossible to draw near to him blessed be he because you have distanced yourself greatly from him. Nevertheless, know that even there in your place you can find his divinity, and from there you can attach yourself to him blessed be he and return to him with a complete repentance. For it is not far from you, but rather that many garments are there. In that place, Ibid. 12. Some people have transgressed so much that they have fallen into a state of concealment within. Concealment. And because of this it seems to them that they have no hope at all. 
God forbid, for they have transgressed and changed and they are in a state where things are forbidden. This is one aspect of concealment. But when they pass through further, God forbid, then God blessed be he is concealed from them in a state of concealment within concealment. Even more so, and then it becomes very difficult to find him blessed be he. However, in the aspect of engaging in the Torah, one can still awaken and make known from him blessed be he that he still has hope until he returns to the truth and draws near to God blessed be he. For truly, through the power of the righteous, everything is constantly able to draw near to God blessed be he. At all times, in any situation, from any place they are. 56 to 3, 13. In the very low and distant places from God blessed be he. Specifically there, high divine life is greatly clothed in the hidden aspects of the Torah. Therefore, one who has fallen very low, God forbid, must know this, that specifically there in his place, he can draw near to God blessed be he even more, for there specifically, very high divine life is hidden, and when he merits to return to God, specifically then high Torah is revealed to him, meaning the hidden aspects of the Torah, Ibid, 4, 14. If a person awakens to repentance, then whenever he wants to enter in the ways of God and strive to be righteous, the evil inclination becomes stronger and a new, stronger evil inclination arises each time, and the more one engages in the service of God, the greater the evil inclination becomes. Therefore, one must strengthen oneself more and acquire new strength against the new evil inclination that arises each time, sometimes, when a person is inspired to associate with those who pursue truth. He has a great desire for it, but afterwards, when he begins to pursue it, his desire weakens, and sometimes, when he wants to be righteous on his own, he completely loses his desire. All this stems from the aforementioned situation, for as soon as a person is inspired to pursue the true, his initial evil inclination dies. And afterwards, when he wants to pursue it, a new evil inclination arises within him, stronger than before, for everything superior overpowers what is inferior. Therefore, one who desires to approach the blessed name truly needs new strength each time against the new evil inclination that arises each time. 72. 15. There are several aspects to the evil inclination, and the majority of the world, their evil inclination is very weak and greatly manifested, like a real spirit of foolishness. And anyone who possesses a clear mind, who truly estimates the greatness of the Creator, it is certain that this evil inclination is a great foolishness and madness to him. Even the temptation of a lustful desire is a foolishness to him and he does not require any effort against it, only that he has another, higher evil inclination than this. But the evil inclination of the majority of the world is truly a great foolishness to one who himself is nothing but a truly intelligent person. Ibid. 16. There is also the aspect of the evil inclination in the matter of drawing closer to the blessed name itself, and there is a great evil inclination, that is, sometimes an abundance of enthusiasm is from outside the measure, that it is from the evil inclination, and this is the aspect of, lest they will become destroyed by going up to the Lord, and one must seek compassion to be saved from this as well. 17. Even concerning the matter of approaching oneself to the blessed name, there is a great evil inclination, which means that sometimes the abundance of enthusiasm is from the evil inclination and not from the good, and this is in the aspect of, lest they break forth to go up to the Lord, and we must seek mercy to be saved from this as well. Ibid. 18. Whoever has judgments upon him, heaven forbid, and has some kind of distress, it is necessary for him to seek to strengthen and fortify himself even more in order to be saved from the evil inclination, 
because then the evil inclination becomes stronger upon him. For the main root of the evil inclination is strength and judgments. God forbid. Ibid. 19. Distress also greatly damages and strengthens the evil inclination. Therefore, one must strengthen oneself greatly to rejoice in all the advised ways that are clearly mentioned in their place. For the main source of strength lies in joy and happiness. As it is written, for the joy of God is your strength. Ibid. 20. Distance is the beginning of closeness. Meaning that when a person wants to draw closer to the blessed name, then many judgments, afflictions, and numerous obstacles come upon him, and it appears to him as if he is being pushed away. But all of this is for his benefit, so that he strengthens himself to draw closer even more, because distance is only for the sake of closeness. 74. 21. Advice for strength is through speech. Meaning that even if one falls to a place where he fell, he should still strengthen himself there to speak words of truth, meaning words of Torah, prayer, and fear of heaven, and to delight in his relationship with his Creator and to find joy in his relationship with his fellow, and especially with his teacher. Because speech has great power to remind a person of the blessed name and to constantly strengthen him, even in places very far from holiness. 78. 22. One must always be in joy and serve God with joy. And if sometimes he falls from his level, he must strengthen himself with the previous days when he had some illumination. And hold on to himself now with the awakening and illumination that he had since then and before. 222. 23. Whoever is involved with foreigners. Meaning that he has business dealings and social interactions with them must be extremely cautious so as not to be harmed God forbid, and to safeguard the sanctity of his Judaism, for he can easily be influenced by their actions and ways. 244. 24. He must strengthen himself greatly and remind himself at all times of the sanctity of his Judaism, and pray to God Almighty to protect him, so that he does not learn from their actions and ways. 245. 243, 46, 25. The essence of strength lies in the heart. For someone with a strong heart is not afraid of any person or thing. And he can perform great and terrible acts and conquer mighty battles through the strength and courage of his heart, so that he is not frightened and run away from the challenges of fierce battles. This is also true in the service of God and understanding it well. 261. 26. When a person falls from his level, he should know that it is from heaven, for distance is the ultimate means of drawing closer. Therefore, he fell so that he awakens and strives more to draw closer to God Almighty. His advice is to start anew entering the service of God as if he had not started at all from the beginning. This is a great principle in the service of God in which we really need to start from scratch every day. When a person begins to reflect on himself and sees that he is far from good and filled with sins, then he can stumble and be unable to pray at all. Therefore, he is obligated to search and seek and find within himself what is good. For how is it possible that he has not performed any commandment or good deed in his life? Even when he begins to reflect on the good that he has done, he sees that the good itself is filled with scars and imperfections. For the good is intermingled with flaws and flaws. Nevertheless, despite all this, in every little good deed, there is some good point. He should continue to search and seek until he finds within himself some other good thing. And through this, he discovers some merit and goodness. Through this, one can truly move from the scale of obligation to the scale of merit and one can truly repent. Through this, one can revive oneself, strengthen oneself, and find joy in whatever situation he is in. And then he can pray, sing, and give thanks to God. 282. 27. A person must be very careful to avoid walking down this path. 
For it is a general and fundamental principle for anyone who wishes to draw closer to God Almighty and not lose his world altogether. The main thing is to distance oneself from sadness, bitterness, and depression in any way possible. For most people who are far from God Almighty, their distance is due to the bitterness and sadness that they fall into due to seeing within themselves the extent of their flaws and ruined deeds. They blame themselves completely and become completely despairing. And they do not pray with any intention nor do they perform any service to God. Even that which they were capable of doing before. Therefore, a person must be very wise in this matter. For many souls have sunk because of this. Despair, God forbid, is more difficult than anything else. Therefore, we must strengthen ourselves greatly to walk with this path mentioned above. Which includes searching within ourselves for good points at all times. In order to revive and strengthen ourselves constantly. Through this, we can pray with desire, liveliness, and joy at all times and truly return to God Almighty as mentioned. Ibid. 28. There are souls that have fallen and need to be revived and restored in various ways. And those who revive the soul, through the stimulation of the brain, specifically through the use of tefillin, which are worn to strengthen the power of thought, one can speak words that are valid to revive and restore these fallen souls. 2, 5, 7, 8, 29. It is forbidden for a person to despair. God forbid, even if they have fallen to a very low place. God forbid, and are resting in the depths of the lowest shoal. Hell, may the merciful one have mercy on them. Nevertheless, one must not despair of God. Blessed be he, in any way in the world. For even from there one can approach him. May he be blessed, because the whole earth is filled with his glory. 2-7-7 the true Zadok is not called a Zadok unless he has the ability to revive and uplift those who have fallen very, very low, to strengthen and support them, to awaken and arouse them, and to reveal to them that God is still with them and close to them. For the whole earth is filled with his glory. And likewise, the Zadok must show those who are in a high level, that they still have much to learn about his knowledge. May he be blessed. In what essence did he create? What he revealed? And so on. 68. 30. When a person falls from their level, and sometimes their fall and descent are very, very great, the merciful one has great compassion for them. Because there are those who fall to extremely lowly places that are called disgraceful levels. They fall into doubts and harmful and very, very disgraceful thoughts and their heart becomes confused, as the shell entangles and surrounds their heart with confusion and strong enticements. Even though in these places it is impossible to find the blessed name, even so, there is still great rectification there, through searching and seeking the blessed name from there, and asking, where is his honor, and everything that they see themselves very far from his honor. They anguish and ask and seek even more where his honor is. And through this, by themselves, as they seek and search and yearn for his honor, and anguish and cry out and ask where his honor is. Through this, by themselves, they ascend to the highest level, as they merit to ascend to the level of Ayan Ha Kadosha, which is the highest holiness. And this is the essence of repentance that one always seeks and searches for where the honor of the blessed name is. As aforementioned, that through this descent it is transformed into a great ascent. And this is the aspect of descent, the ultimate ascent, as is explained in all the sacred books. Look into them deeply and understand well, for it is very profound. 12. 31. One does not need to possess great intellectual prowess in order to engage in the service of God. However, it is crucial to have a deep understanding of the matter at hand. This is because anyone who desires to enter into the service of God, even someone who may be considered insignificant by societal standards, will undoubtedly encounter numerous challenges and obstacles. 
These challenges can manifest in various forms, such as moments of regression or fluctuation in one's spiritual journey. It is not uncommon for individuals to unintentionally fulfill certain aspects of God's service without even realizing it. Therefore, it is imperative to cultivate immense resilience and fortitude in the face of these trials. This resilience can only be attained by embracing and navigating through a path that may appear convoluted or contrary to conventional notions. In fact, one must embrace a level of crookedness that surpasses what is commonly understood. It is of utmost importance to bear this in mind, as one will undoubtedly require and greatly benefit from this unwavering determination and steadfastness. Ibid. 32. And know that all these descents and descents and confusions etc. necessarily need to pass through them before entering the gates of holiness. And all the true Zadokim and followers have gone through all this. Ibid. 33. And if you are very, very far from him, blessed be he, and it seems to you that you are really causing great harm to him at all times. Know that such a person who is so immersed, every movement and movement that he separates himself a little at a time from his materiality, even a movement in the world that draws him from his materiality towards him, blessed be he, is very, very great and precious to him, and he progresses in this thousands upon thousands of miles in his higher worlds. Ibid. 34. And the main thing is to strengthen oneself with joy in all kinds of advice. Because sadness is very harmful. Therefore, one must strive with all his might to distance and drive away sadness and dark bitterness either by searching and finding within oneself still good points, or by not making oneself a nation. And according to the majority, it is impossible to make oneself happy except through matters of laughter and humor. As explained all this in the letter, Simha, mentioned there. Ibid. 35. And know that a person needs to pass through this world on a very narrow bridge. And the whole principle and essence is not to be afraid at all. Ibid. 36. According to the greatness of the blessed name and the strength of his exaltedness. With a light movement in the world and with a glance in a world that is not worthy of his honor at all. It would have been fitting for him. God forbid. To bring upon man what is fitting. But the blessed name is full of compassion. And the whole world is full of his mercy and he greatly desires in the world. Therefore, my beloved, my brother, you are the spring of my soul and heart. Be very strong and courageous and trust in God, for he will not forsake you. For everything that passes upon you, everything is for your good, and rely on his abundant mercies without limit. For the blessed name is exceedingly great and his greatness is immeasurable. And there is a matter that everything is turned for good, and transgressions are turned into merits. Just be strong and courageous. 2. 49. 37. And it is a great ascent when the evil inclination still exists within a person. For then he can serve God blessed be he. With the evil inclination specifically. That is. To overcome with fervor the evil inclination. To draw from it a certain service which is fitting for God blessed be he. And if there were no evil inclination, a person's service would not be considered at all. Therefore, God blessed be he allows the evil inclination to spread so much upon a person, and especially upon one who truly desires to draw close to him blessed be he. Even though through its spread and its overpowering, it leads a person to commit many sins and great flaws. Nevertheless, all this is precious before him blessed be he because of the good movement. Which is when through the overpowering of the evil inclination, a person overcomes it and flees from it. This is esteemed by him blessed be he even more than if he had served him for a thousand years. Without an evil inclination, for all the worlds were created only for the sake of man. For his entire elevation and importance is due to the fact that he has such an evil inclination and he strengthens himself against it. Therefore, 
Everything that spreads more and more is also more precious in his eyes blessed be he. Every movement in the world that he strengthens against and God blessed be he himself helps him in. This, as it is written, the Lord will not forsake him in his hand. Ibid. 38. The evil inclination, yet Sirhara, entices a person at all times and stirs him up to that which stirs him up. And even if the person does not listen to it and turns away from it, nevertheless, it entices him again a second, third, and more times. But if the person is strong in his knowledge and resolute against the evil inclination and does not turn to it at all, then the evil inclination departs and leaves him. And similarly with prayer regarding the thoughts that come to confuse him. It is exactly the same. For the thought comes numerous times to confuse him. And one needs to be strong not to look at it at all and not to consider it from any angle and to pay no attention to it whatsoever. 51. 39. When a person enters a higher level of holiness, such as when approaching a true Zadok and the like. Sometimes an impure incident may happen to him. God forbid. One should not let this affect his knowledge because, on the contrary, sometimes this is a sign that he is getting closer to holiness and sometimes it is a great reward. For him, 117, 40, already explained that there is no despair in the world at all. And in this itself, that he sees himself as very far from the blessed God. In this itself, it is worthy for him to revive himself. Since in any case, he knows that he is distant. For it was possible for him to be so far until he did not know at all that he is far. And since anyway he knows the greatness of his distance. Even though it is true. Nevertheless, this itself is considered by the blessed God as what he knows his distance. And through this itself, it is worthy for him to revive himself and strengthen himself in everything he can. 68. 41. Even the simple people, called, prostitutes, and even the wicked and even the nations of the world, all of them receive vitality from the Torah, and therefore even one who is a simple person. For example, one who cannot learn or one who is in a place where he cannot learn. Nevertheless, even then he receives vitality from the Torah. Therefore, even then he must maintain himself with fear of heaven in everything he can. Even at a time when he deviates from the Torah, and even one who cannot learn. For all of them receive vitality from the hidden Torah through the righteous one who behaves simply. At times. And, look within yourself. 78. 42. And even one who has fallen. God forbid. Very very low and resting in the lowest parts of Shoal. God forbid. Even so, he has great rectification through the righteous true one. For through him all can receive vitality from the holiness in all places where they are. Therefore, truly there is no despair in the world at all. Cain. There is no despair if someone does not take the path of the other. And however he has fallen to a place where he has fallen. God have mercy on his soul. Even so, he has hope to return and to return to the blessed God. And the main thing is. From the depths of Sheol I cried out. Psalms 130-1. For even the cry from the depths of Sheol below will never be lost. And he will cry out and cry out and cry out and he will not despair from the cry forever. He will only cry out and pray before the blessed God always. However it may be, until he looks and fears the Lord from the heavens. Sisho 202. Chei 271. 43. Even in the lowest parts of Sheol, they can rely on him. Blessed be he. There. 44. If you believe that it is possible to spoil, believe that it is possible to repair. L. Maharan 112. H I T N O T Z E T Z U T E L O H U T. The shining and effulgence of divinity. 1. This is what we see. Sometimes a person becomes passionately inspired during prayer and says many words with great enthusiasm. This is due to God's compassion for him.
in which an infinite light opens for him and illuminates him. When a person sees this effulgence, even though in reality he does not see its source, he immediately becomes inspired. His soul becomes ignited with great attachment and he attaches himself to the infinite light and the revelation of the infinite light. According to the number of words that are opened and shine, all of these words are said with great attachment, self-sacrifice, and the nullification of his powers. And when he becomes totally absorbed in the infinite, then he is in a state of, and no man knew, meaning he does not even know himself. But this state needs to be temporary and fluctuating, so that he will maintain his self-awareness without departing before its time. God forbid, for the Holy One, blessed be he, desires our service. Therefore, it is necessary that he not remain in this state, but only until God himself comes and takes his soul. Then he will become completely nullified in the infinite, in absolute accordance to what he merits. See Teshiva 10, 4 to 9, 2. By adhering to the constant attachment to the infinite desire, so that it will not be completely nullified. As mentioned before, then afterwards, when one is in a state of return, when he returns to his knowledge and essence, then there remains in him an impression from the wondrous light of this attachment. And then the impression reveals to him the knowledge of the unity of the infinite and his goodness. That everything is good and everything is one. For this aspect is from the world to come. All this is obtained through the confession of words before the true student. Ibid. 3. The true Zadok spends his whole life in repentance. Even when he knows that he has already fully repented, he continues to repent for his initial attainment. Considering it now as physicality compared to his current enlightened understanding of the divine blessing, this is his daily practice. Going from one level of understanding to another and continually repenting for his previous level. This is the state of the world to come, where everything will be Shabbat and all will be repentance. The essence of the world to come is the understanding and connection to God. And whenever they attain higher levels of understanding, they will continue to repent for their previous understanding. And one who has deep understanding can comprehend through this the greatness of the Creator and the Righteous Ones. Blessed are they and blessed are those who attach themselves to them. 6 to 3. 4. Know that there is a light that is above spiritual souls and souls. And it is an endless light. Although the intellect cannot comprehend it. Nevertheless, the pursuit of thought chases after it. Through the performance of mitzvah with joy, one can attain it, whether through pursuit or by refraining from pursuing. We create nine chambers that are not lights, nor souls, nor spirits, and no one can uphold them, cling to them, or perceive them. Fortunate is the one who endeavors to grasp these levels of perception, even though the intellect cannot comprehend them, because they cannot cling or be perceived. See inside. 24. 5. The attainment of godliness is impossible to achieve except through many contractions. From the upper to the lower intellect. And each person must greatly seek a worthy teacher and guide who will be great in stature. To the point that he can internalize in his mind the attainment of godliness. Which is the essence and true hope. And anything that is even smaller. He needs an even greater teacher who knows how to guide him by surrounding him with several wondrous concepts from a great intellect, which are contractions mentioned above, through which he can attain godliness. See Zadok, Sign 37, 38, 30, 1 to 2, 6. By means of the Torah and the commandments, one attains the understanding of God's blessedness. For every letter in the Torah and every commandment is a contraction to attain his blessedness. Ibid. 3. 7. In order to merit this understanding, one must possess intellect, which serves as a precursor to attaining the understanding of God's blessedness. And it is impossible to attain this understanding except through hating financial gain to the extreme. 
hating money with utmost hatred. However, through the love of money, one falls from this intellect and, on the contrary, falls into folly, foolishness, sadness, and bitterness. The Kelepot, negative spiritual forces, and the other side, evil inclination, surround one with their influences, which are the opposite of the aforementioned intellect. Ibid. 4. 8. By rejoicing in the three pilgrimage festivals, one merits the attainment of God's blessedness. Ibid. 5. 9. Every person in Israel is a divine part from above. The essence of divinity is in the heart. The divinity in the heart of each Israeli is infinite. For his fiery light is endless. Meaning that there is no end or limit to his passion. According to the intensity of the heart's fervor in an Israeli, which is infinite, it would have been impossible for him to perform any service. He would not have been able to reveal any good qualities. For due to the intensity of his fervor, he can do nothing. Therefore, he must necessarily restrict the intensity of his heart's fervor in order to be able to serve the blessed name gradually and in measure. For the blessed name desires our service, that we serve him through good actions and qualities. And through this, his kingdom will be revealed. 49. 10. Everything that comes closer to the blessed name needs to know that it is very far from the blessed name. For if one thinks and imagines in their knowledge that they have already come close to the blessed name and know in the knowledge of the blessed name, this is a sign that they do not know at all. For if they knew even a little of the blessed name, they would know that they are very far from it and do not know at all. And this is something that cannot be spoken or explained with the mouth. For the greatness of the Creator is immeasurable. Ibid. 11. One must accustom oneself each time to the concept of complete nullification, focusing only on the true eternal good. And this is achieved by closing one's eyes from seeing the physical world. It is impossible to fully comprehend and include the ultimate good without completely closing one's eyes from seeing this world. Moreover, this also allows one to disregard the difficulties and pains of this world. However, one cannot constantly remain in a state of nullification as it goes beyond human limitations. Therefore, it is necessary for nullification to be in a state of desire and return. And then the impression of nullification will enlighten the consciousness with a sweet essence of divine existence, which cannot be explained to another person at all. Through this, great joy is drawn and through this, new revelations of the Torah are revealed. Through this, one can revive and strengthen oneself in all the challenges and adventures that one may experience and taste and feel the essence of this world similar to the world to come. 65 to 3, 4, 12. When one merits a certain revelation of the divine, one must be careful to exercise restraint, to limit the mind and knowledge so that they do not exceed their boundaries. Even in holiness, it is forbidden for the mind to wander into realms that are beyond its jurisdiction. For every created being has its own sufficiency and limitation in its connection to the divine. Specifically, in the revelation of one's connection to godliness, it is prohibited for one to go beyond the boundaries lest it lead to destruction. God forbid. 2, 5, 7, 13. King David, peace be upon him, said, For I know that God is great, and so on. I know specifically that the greatness of the Creator, blessed be He, is according to the level of one's merit, one who merits to have a revelation in their heart. It is impossible to convey it to another person at all. Therefore, he said, for I know specifically, Ik Vais, dot quote, Sisho Haran 1, 14, and even to oneself, it is impossible to convey from day to day based on what dawns and reveals itself to him on that day. One cannot even recount to oneself the second day, the dawn and the revelation of the greatness of the Creator. Blessed be he, that he had yesterday. Ibid. 15. The Almighty. Blessed be he, 
is exceedingly great, and his greatness is unfathomable, and no one knows it at all. Many wondrous and infinite things happen in the world, numerous and extraordinary changes and innovations, and no one knows them at all. It is impossible to speak about this, but based on what one perceives in their heart, they can understand from afar that no one knows at all. Yet, despite this, one is still very far from the ultimate knowledge that is not known. For one has not yet begun to know it all. Consider deeply the wondrous discussions on this matter and how to strengthen oneself through it, so as not to fall into eternal ignorance. Even if one falls into a place of difficulty and distress, let oneself never despair and always cry out, for the Almighty, blessed be He, is exceedingly great and can transform everything for the good, and so on. See there, Ibid, 3, W-A-W. V-I-D-U-I, Confession. 1. Through the confession of words before a knowledgeable student, the truth is revealed, and through this, one attains the quality of the holiness of its roots. Through this, one cancels the rule of the celestial bodies, and through this, one gains the understanding that all events are for one's good, and one blesses for all the good and benevolent as this perspective is a glimpse of the world to come. 4 to 1, 2, 3. Nanak, 2. A person's sins are engraved on their bones. And through the confession of words before a knowledgeable student, one removes the negative effects of these sins that were engraved on them. And all their sins are forgiven and atoned for. Ibid, 5, 3. Before confessing and revealing one's heart to a knowledgeable student, even if one was near a knowledgeable student who provided them with money, they still do not know which path to follow, as there is a straight path before each person, but its end is the ways of death. However, through the confession of words before a knowledgeable student, the student guides them along the right path according to the root of their soul, and everything is rectified. 4-8. 4. To eight. Four. Each time one comes before a knowledgeable student, they should tell their entire heart, and through this, they become included in the infinite. It is necessary to specify the sin, as one must confess specifically and in detail each time for everything they have done. There are many reasons for this, sometimes forgetting the sin, and sometimes it becomes very burdensome and difficult for one to utter the confession, along with many other reasons. The remedy for this is to find joy in the joy of a commandment. Like a wedding with a commandment or any other joy of a commandment. To increase joy greatly. Through this, one will dance from the heat of joy. And through this, one can express their confession through words. Through this, one will rectify the impairment of their sins. Ibid. 9. Zain. Zikaron. Memory and Remembrance. 1. Prayer is a segula for remembrance. 7 to 5. 2. Through fasting, charity, and especially charity for the land of Israel. Forgetfulness is removed and one merits remembrance. 37. 3 to 4. 3. By clapping one's hands during prayer, decrees are annulled and forgetfulness is removed, leading to remembrance. 46. 4. One must be very careful to not let remembrance fall into forgetfulness. Meaning that they should always be remembered in the world to come and not be forgotten. It is appropriate for each individual of Israel to have the practice that as soon as they wake up from sleep, before engaging in any matters, they immediately remind themselves of the world to come. This is a general aspect of remembrance. Afterwards, one must continue the remembrance in detail, meaning that they should increase their awareness in every thought, speech, and action, so that the Blessed One invites them closer to Him through hints. For the Blessed One diminishes and reveals Himself from infinity to without end and hints to them. Hints every day through all things, summoning them on that particular day, and one must increase their awareness in this to remember the Blessed One through every thought, speech, and action that the Blessed One invites them with every day.
and to understand through them hints of how to draw closer to him. However, the expansion of awareness must be in moderation, etc. C.36-37, 54-2, 5, 5. Even someone who knows and understands hints from all matters, even from mundane matters, it is still forbidden for him to solely engage in this because of two reasons. See inside. But he must have satisfaction of satisfying his necessity only by compulsion. And even from this satisfaction itself, he must give charity. See money or sign number 27. And someone who acts this way. Great repairs and unifications are made above. And the majority of people who do not have this intellect to understand the hints as mentioned. For them, all this is done automatically through changing clothes. Wearing TZI TZI T and Tefillin. Studying Torah. Prayer and giving and receiving. 54, 2-3, 6. In order to maintain the above-mentioned consciousness, one must guard oneself not to fall into the evil eye, which is the death of the heart through which forgetfulness comes. There. 4. 7. There are several forms of the evil eye. One is when one feels distress over his friend's success. And there are several aspects to this. Therefore, one must be very careful not to have any evil eye towards his friend at all. And similarly, one must pray a lot to the blessed name that he should be saved from the evil eye of his friend. And if one does not feel strong enough to withstand the evil eye and to subordinate it, he should flee from it. There. 8. One must also guard oneself from speaking evil because through speaking evil, the memory is damaged. See speech. Letter Yud. One must also force oneself to be happy. And through all this, the above-mentioned consciousness is maintained. See joy. Letters Yud and Dalet. There. 5, 6, 9. Even though one must guard the consciousness for the sake of Torah and divine service, but there are also virtues in forgetfulness because one must accustom oneself to forget all those things that distract one from divine service and especially during prayer. For all confusions come at that time. And because of the majority of distractions that crossed one's mind for not having acted well in this matter and that matter, etc. Therefore, one must accustom oneself that as soon as it happens and passes and the matter is finished, one should forget it completely and should not start to think again about it at all, especially during prayer. And also, all worries about sins that have passed and all mistakes that have occurred, all should be forgotten during prayer and service, and even during the rest of the day, one must forget them from consciousness so that one is able to engage in divine service with joy. Especially during prayer. As mentioned. Sisho Heron. 26. Chet. C-H-A-K-I-R-O-T-U. C-H-O-K-H-M-O-T-C-H-I-T-Z-O-N-I-Y-O-T. Secular or non-Jewish knowledge and wisdom as it pertains to. Jewish studies or Jewish life. 1. The essence of intellect is the true intellect of the Zadokim. Through this intellect, one can attain godliness and bring the understanding of godliness to all who are receptive to it. All external wisdoms are complete foolishness in contrast to this intellect. And sometimes, due to our many sins, when this intellect falls, those external wisdoms, meaning idolatry, astrology, and the Sitra Atra, become stronger in their wisdom and their dominion. And then the dominion of idolatrous worshippers becomes stronger. And who can bear the sound of the great outcry and cry? When this intellect falls before them, as the fool wants to appear wise, and they continue to draw towards their true foolish wisdom the true wisdom that is the essence of true wisdom, which is the aforementioned intellect of attaining godliness. And it is said that only they are wise. And there is no greater wisdom than their seductive wisdom. Whose entire nourishment comes from the fall of the aforementioned intellect. And the Holy One, blessed be he, cries out against this.
and every individual must cut off and separate and elevate the wisdom and intellect from them and return it to its root and this is achieved through charity and kindness that one performs and through this kindness one receives rebuke from truthful reprovers 30 6 to 7 2 wisdom is the root of all things therefore everyone must protect their intellect from external foolish wisdom for the main wisdom to acquire perfection is only the wisdom of godliness and all other wisdoms are worthless and not wisdom at all 35 to 1 3 at birth the intellect is limited for everyone and when one begins to utilize it in understanding the service of the lord then the intellect grows and develops but when a person introduces external thoughts into their intellect which are external wisdoms then the holiness of their intellect diminishes according to the degree of external wisdom and due to this the external intellect collects and connects all desires and all bad and lowly qualities ibid 4 therefore it is necessary for every person to diligently guard their intellect and thoughts so that no external thought or external wisdom enters their thoughts because all evil flaws and sins come from a defect in thoughts god forbid this is accomplished by not allowing external wisdom and thoughts to enter one's thoughts the main repentance and correction for all sins is when one strengthens themselves to eliminate all external thoughts from their knowledge and intellect because wisdom and intellect are the soul which is the root of everything and when one sanctifies their intellect meaning their soul through this they elevate and restore everything to its root and this is the essence of repentance ibid 5 when the people of israel enter with humility and peace into the external wisdom of the nations the righteous one falls from his level of understanding and his understanding becomes blurred and hidden 49 to 7 6 the abundance of wisdom especially the wisdom of philosophy greatly damages as the main strengthening of the heart that can acquire true wisdom and intellect is only through good deeds however one whose intellect is greater than his good deeds his heart cannot contain his intellect and then the intellect corrupts him further these are the philosophers who do not have a pure heart and their heart is not able to receive the intellect in holiness and truth as it should because their heart is weak and lacking especially these intellectuals who engage in the wisdom of philosophy which greatly damages them because through their weak heart they cannot contain the intellect within them to distance themselves from sins and cleave to the blessed name through it which is the essence of true intellect rather because of their intellect they corrupt more and harm them and the whole world more than snakes and scorpions and all kinds of evil animals and harmful creatures in the world may the merciful one protect us for they blaspheme and deride the supreme being with their wisdom and against the holy torah especially against the sages of the talmud and the righteous who came after them may their memory be blessed as is known and publicized may the merciful one protect the remnant of israel from them and from their multitude 55 6 7 what the blessed name has limited for human intellect to understand is a great commandment to sharpen the intellect to understand the matter to its core but there are difficulties that the human intellect cannot currently understand and only in the future will the solution be revealed it is forbidden for a person to delve into them and anyone who relies on his own intellect and investigates them it is said about him all her slain will not return because relying on his own intellect is forbidden but rather one should rely on faith even these difficulties that have a solution sometimes the paths of intellect are closed and one does not know how to respond to the atheism in his heart the remedy for this is the study of the poscum see talmud torah as long as one does not merit to fix and open his intellect to understand the solution he must rely solely on faith even in these difficulties because the essence is faith 62 to 2 8 
Through evil speech, the wisdom of philosophers in the world strengthens and spreads. This is a form of the impurity of the serpent, and it greatly harms the world. May the merciful one save us. 63. 9. It is forbidden to look into the books of research. For there are many difficulties that arise from the empty void that cannot find any solution at all. Only in the future will the solution be revealed. But in this world, no intellect can comprehend them. Anyone who looks into these wisdoms that arise from there will sink and be lost forever. For it is said about them, all who come to it shall not return. For it is impossible to find in them the blessed name to answer the difficulties and complexities with any intellect. Only Israel, through complete faith, surpasses all wisdoms and complexities in the world. For they believe in the blessed name and his holy Torah without any investigation and wisdom. Only through perfect faith, because of this, they are called Israelite Hebrews, because through their faith, they pass and surpass all kinds of wisdoms and investigations. For they do not need to search for the truth at all. For they know the truth in its truthfulness through their complete faith. For they believe in the truth according to what they received from our fathers and our sages. May their memory be blessed. And through this, they pass and surpass all wisdoms. 64-2 10. And know that there are great righteous individuals who need to specifically delve into these wisdoms. For through their study, they elevate and extract the souls that have fallen and sunk into them. Therefore, do not bring to yourself a vision from what we have found regarding many of the great ancients who were engaged in these wisdoms. For they were forced to do so, as mentioned, and for the greatness of their holiness. They elevated the souls that fell into them, as mentioned, but individuals who are not so great in their righteousness, certainly not simple individuals in these generations, God forbid to look and engage in them, for there will be sinking and eternal loss. May God have mercy. 64-3. 11. The melody of the true great Zadok. Ha Zadok ha Gadol ha Amati is able to lift up the souls that have fallen into the mentioned heresy, for which there is no return. Ibid. 5. 12. The philosophers of nature who want to prove according to their distorted wisdom that everything is based on nature, God forbid, they are evil creatures that trample on and destroy many souls of our people. For many souls of Israel have sunk in this. May God have mercy on them. And these souls are like birds caught in a trap. Therefore, anyone who values his soul must flee and save his soul from them, so that his soul will not be torn and trampled. God forbid, by these evil creatures mentioned above. Therefore, it is unthinkable to consider at all these books that speak of investigations. Even in books written by great scholars of Israel. For there is no greater evil than this. 4 to 6, 11, 13. Through charity, the power of the serpent, which is the root of the wisdom of nature, is nullified, and through this, we are automatically saved from the evil creatures mentioned above, who are the philosophers of nature, and sometimes, even when they are subdued, they still instill some doubt willingly. If one behaves according to his blessed will alone, then, we need to return and increase charity. For charity subdues and humbles the wisdom of nature constantly and reveals that everything behaves according to his blessed will alone. Ibid. 9. 11. 14. The essence of worship is only through complete and absolute simplicity, without any kind of wisdom whatsoever. And this is the true goal. And heaven forbid for anyone calling himself a Jew to enter into books of investigations. God forbid, for they have no part in the inheritance of Jacob. For in all wisdoms, there is a stone of stumbling in the form of Amalek, through which many fall and stumble and can instantly perish. God forbid, this is the greatest evil in all the evils. And even the books of Israel that speak of investigations should not be considered at all for they greatly damage the holy faith. 
which is the foundation of everything. But praise be to God. There are many holy books now that are filled with teaching and fear of God without any investigations, which are not based on the knowledge of the Greek scholars whose name should be erased, but rather their foundation is on the holy mountains. Based on the words of our wise sages, may their memory be blessed. In the Talmud and Midrashim, and specifically those based on the words of Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai and his colleagues. Twist and turn in them, and improve and elevate them, specifically in them and not in the books that are mixed with the opinions of the nations, who are primarily the deniers of faith. From them, save yourself, from them and their multitude, and let your soul be plundered for eternal life and for the world to come, forever and ever. 2. 19. 15. Regarding difficulties that arise concerning the blessed name, one who possesses true knowledge, regardless of his level, is worthy to understand that just as she diminutive, so too is it fitting for there to be difficulties concerning the blessed name, and it is becoming and beautiful for him. Blessed be he, according to his greatness and exaltation, for surely it is impossible for us to comprehend his guidance with our limited intellects. Therefore, it is necessary for there to be difficulties concerning him according to our limited human knowledge. Look deeply and understand the truth. 52. Chitin, Groom. 1. By prayer you can find your match. 9. 2. Joyful dancing at weddings sweetens judgments. 32. 3. The fact that the bride sends a talit to the groom has a great significance according to the true Torah. Similarly, the shouting of Shabbat greetings and the recitation of humorous words are all relevant to the wedding according to the truth. There are many profound reasons and explanations for all the actions performed at the wedding, such as what the bride covers, what is poured on the groom's hands, what the groom asks and receives a sermon for, and what the jokers do, etc. All of these come from God. Further explanations can be found elsewhere regarding all these matters. Sisho Heron 86. 4. Through praise and thanksgiving to the blessed name and through the study of the laws, one can find their true match, the one they need to find. 2. 1. 2. 4. 5. Due to the difficulty of finding one's match without any blemish, the month of Elul is a time to repair this. See Elul 1, 87, 6. For those who cannot find their match, the fix is to make an effort to hear new Torah insights from someone who has dot. My ball dot, 89, 7. On this matter, when breaking a clay vessel during the wedding ceremony, it is implied and reminded to the individual that there is a Jehenna, hell, existence. This is done so that one remembers, and does not become overly attached to their desires, but rather sanctifies oneself with a suitable pairing. Additionally, it hints to the person that if they have an evil wife, they should not commit adultery with her or divorce her, for through her influence, he will not see the face of Jehenna. It is necessary to be extremely cautious not to divorce one's wife. 90. See further. Regarding breaking the of the clay vessel as a sign, as indicated in Likute Maharan Part 1 Torah 6 Letter 8, and Torah 265, Chatso, Midnight, 1. By observing rising up at midnight, engaging in Torah study, prayer, and solitude, through this one can clarify the good from the bad and maintain true remembrance, constantly remembering its purpose and eternal end, and always attaching its thoughts to the world to come, and to contemplate everything that Hashem, God, surrounds and reveals with every day, that everything is solely for the purpose of hinting to Him and constantly drawing closer to Him, which is the essence of true good. And the essence of a person's existence in this world is to count the days of their fleeting life. And everything that is done with them every day, all of it is solely for this purpose. 54. And 2. Observing midnight is the reliever of judgments and it is capable of redeeming 
Line 149. 3. The time of midnight is always after 6 hours from the beginning of the night. Whether it is in summer or winter. And then the time of midnight begins and continues until the completion of the second watch. Which is 2 hours. In the morning. It is good to gaze at the heavens. And through this. Knowledge is extended. Ibid. 4. In these times. When the exile has already lasted a long time upon us. And the blessed name waits at all times to return to us and rebuild our holy temple. It is appropriate for us not to delay in the construction of the temple. But rather to make great efforts in its construction. Therefore. We must be very careful to rise at midnight every night and mourn greatly over the destruction of the temple. For perhaps in a previous incarnation, it was he who caused the temple to be destroyed. And even if not, perhaps he now delays the construction of the temple through his sins and is considered as if he caused its destruction. Therefore, he should weep and mourn greatly at midnight every night. And through this, he will be considered as if he participates in the construction of the temple. And through this, he will merit to draw near to the truth. That is, to draw near to the righteous, the God-fearing, and the honest, who are the essence of beauty and grace and the true beauty of the world. And through this, his eyes will be opened and he will look at himself in all measures. How he grasps them and he will repent for all his bad traits and he will come to know and recognize the great blessed name 2 67 5 through rising at midnight and morning over the destruction of the temple we will be saved from the fires there 6 the main service of a jewish individual is in the winter to be careful to rise at midnight and in the summer when the night is very short less than six hours as we do not stand at midnight mentioned above on letter gimel three then one should be careful to rise in the early morning at dawn sisho heron 301 tet t-i-l-t-u-l unziat l-a-d-e-r-a-k-h-i-m journeys and travels on the road one neglecting to rebuke and to practice ethics causes expulsion and moving 22 to 1 2. Before embarking on a journey, give charity, and through this, there will be no delay or hardship on the journey. 31. End. 3. All the travels and journeys of a person are due to the negligence of faith, which is a form of idolatry. Sometimes, through traveling, faith is repaired, and then anger is also repaired in the world, and compassion extends into the world. 4. Exile comes as a result of neglecting Torah. Ibid. 5. By appointing an unworthy rabbi, Israel is expelled from their place of settlement, where they were residing from the beginning. This is the aspect of expulsion from the land of Israel. For in the place where they settled, it was already the land of Israel. 61-2. 6. Even someone who wanders and occasionally visits places very far from the service of the blessed God, such as the homes of wicked people or even the homes of idolaters and astrologers and the like. Nonetheless, there is the power for Israel to elevate and uplift all these places to the service of the blessed God. Therefore, one must do his part to draw himself to the service of the blessed God wherever he may be. 2. 76. 7. When a person has a heart, there is no place that can prevent him from his service of the blessed God. And he has no excuse to say that in a certain place it is impossible for him to engage in the service of God. For when one has a heart, all the places in the world belong to him. 56. 8. On the road, one should be cautious of using the ritual baths. Mikvah. For the mikvah is a secular for being saved from murderers. Chei Maharan 275.